Pauline, uh, who do I got to record for now? Board Game Barbecue. Who? Board Game Barbecue. Oh, those, those jack wagons of, in Australia? Whatever. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. You're really getting me to do all these ridiculous voiceovers. Things. All right. All right. Here we go. Hey, guys! Stephen Bonacore, the pod father of gaming, your best buddy in North America. Congratulations on your 300th episode. What an accomplishment for my best buddies down in Australia. You guys are the best, best podcast out there. Well, maybe second to Board Games Insider, but love what you're doing. You guys rock. All right, make sure we edit the front of that out before we send it to them, okay? Hello and welcome to episode 300 of the Board Game Barbecue podcast. As always, proudly brought to you by Advent Games and our patrons. Without the support of Advent and our patrons, we would not be here today, 300 episodes in, and the whole gang is here to celebrate our 300th episode. We've got Jules. Hey, Jules. Hello, hello. Uh, Connor. Hello, Dan. Hello, everyone. Joe. Hey, Dan. Hey, team. Got a bit of a roll call going here. Lauren. Hey, mate. How are you? Dana. Present. <laughs> Def. <laughs> hello, hello. Mitch. Mm. <laughs> and last but by no means least, Adrian. Hey, how are we doing? Uh, and I am, of course, Dan. And a special thanks to Stephen Bonacore for recording somewhat reluctantly that message for us. And I have a feeling there may be a few more messages to come later in the show. I, th- I think he's salty about something that may have occurred. Well, in the <laughs> oh, early stages no. of this podcast. Yeah. Surely not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he'd he'd no, be harboring he. that grudge. So 300 episodes. How the hell did that happen? <sighs> It was, re- it was actually really easy. <laughs> <laughs> How many has it felt like, Dana? How many? <laughs> uh, I think I've been in about eight, so it was <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> a solid effort. Yeah. <laughs> Only eight just feels like an eternity. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's already started. <laughs> oh. So what we thought we'd do tonight is just share some of our some of our uh, our highlights from 300 episodes. We also reached out to our Patreons and asked what some of their highlights were. So we'll go through some of those. And then not forgetting, of course, that we're also celebrating this year four years. So we can talk about some of the things that we've also achieved outside of the podcast mm. over the last four years. Yeah, Jules and- can drink now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, <'cause, laughs> I get it because he's a baby. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. That makes sense. Thanks, Phil. Thanks. Yeah. So I'll, I'll send you the jokes in advance so you can Thanks. catch up yeah, earlier. Yeah. I'll bet them. <laughs> yep. It's Good. just his internet in one yeah. of his <laughs> In the outback. In the outback. <laughs> so who wants to kick off? Not me. I'm always kicking off. Then. That's it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next time. <laughs> oh, man. I can share some thoughts. I think for me, honestly, as I often do reflect back on how this whole thing started, it's such a bizarre circumstance and it's really incredible that it's kept going even up till four years and hopefully many more to come. And I know everyone has their own personal highlights and personal stories, but for me, when I really do reflect on it, it feels like it has been life-changing in a number of ways. Um, not only getting to meet some of the people I really look up to in the industry and being able to interview them, but making new friends as well. But also for me personally, actually having a whole career change and that really not being possible without my learning experiences through this podcast and community, that has been absolutely monumental to me deciding to totally shift careers into the board game industry. So it's, it's been an incredible journey and I really hope it doesn't stop anytime soon because I am absolutely still loving it. Yeah, like it's funny when we started this, Jules, because it was, you know, in the midst of, of the pandemic. So we, in a way, that actually helped 
I guess, find people that wanted mm. to do this in the way that we were structuring it because we couldn't meet with each other. We couldn't sort of, you know, catch up and play games together in person. We were playing games online. We were sort of having these meetings. Even when we had our very first one, it was, uh, you know, just, I guess, eight, nine people jumping on and being like, oh, hey, we don't really know each other, but the only thing we have in common is, is board games. And mm. we've now become... Like we've, it's been iterated a few times. We've had new members join, um, which is, you know it's gone from strength to strength. Um, and yeah, it's just been such a great experience. Mm. And what I'm really grateful for is getting me out of my comfort zone in terms of meeting new people. So I'm that's what I'm grateful for at least. Mm. Question for Joe, Dana, and and Lauren: How did you first hear about the podcast? That's a good question. I feel like. I was just trawling through the different board game groups on Facebook and I stumbled upon the barbecue group, found out about the event, ended up, happened to be the first Sydney event and it was the first event. You guys were all there. Mm. Oh, yes. Mitch taught us Hadrian's Wall. That was great. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) back when you guys had the names and what you could play and teach on the back of the shirts. Oh, that's right. Yeah. On the red shirts. Yeah. (laughs) And from there, on the way out, Adrian did his little plug. Do you know that we're a podcast? So started listening from that. But it was kind of Facebook, then event, then pod. Yeah. So it does, does it hard sell. help to mention hard it then? Sell. Oh, yeah. Bloody earth it does. Bloody yeah. earth. That's why every Uber driver in Brisbane follows our <laughs> podcast. Because when I get in, I just start to follow us automatically and be like, mate, you got to check this out. It's so good. And then well, you just grab his Spotify. You grab his Spotify yeah. and just plug it in. <laughs> yeah, go for it. They don't care. <laughs> Queenslanders, they don't mind. <laughs> what about you, Joe? Yeah, for me it was the other way around. So I think I'd I'd search. I was in a moment. Where I was searching for board game podcasts, and it was either on Reddit or on Facebook or something. Someone had made a comment to listen to the board game barbecue, um, and so that's when I found you guys. So I found the podcast first, then joined the community on Facebook and on Discord. Um, and I think I wouldn't have started going to board game days or board game meetups if it wasn't for that kind of easy introduction uh, into meeting strangers over a board mm. game. So really credit the podcast for kind of opening up, like what Connor said, opening that up for for people with social anxiety, for sure. And interestingly enough, Joe, who, like Lauren mentioned that she met me at the game day and whatnot, and who was the first person you met um, from the podcast, Joe? I can't remember. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he knows it was me. It was the day I that I ruined Luda Lima for you all. I do. Oh, I do. Yeah, it was you and Dan at the same time. That's right. Yeah. That story. Exactly. Oh, that's right. Great, great story. Yeah. 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 That's very good. If we want to throw back to, to connections between us, I think I'd be the only one that had a connection with any of us prior to the podcast because mm. I was a backer on Mitch's Playmat campaign on Kickstarter <laughs> yeah, without correct. even knowing each other. Yeah, and you were the first one I met, Jules, because yes. you offered to come when I was going around Canberra giving out all my Playmats and doing the deliveries and so forth off that. You offered to meet up with us and, and come around with me. So Yeah, that's it. Yeah, definitely. Jules is the first person I met face-to-face. So Ooh. Jules was your lookout, basically. Yeah, he just made sure I didn't drive into any of those really I was bad delivery areas boy. of Canberra. You know, there's a big building there apparently, famous one. What the Hyperdome? <laughs> I think it's called Parliament House, something like that. <laughs> and Dana, you went to the very first Brisbane Game Day. Is that right? Yes, I did. But I I found out about the podcast beforehand and actually I remember distinctly being on the toilet doing a poo (laughs) (laughs) and I was couldn't get through one episode without it could we (laughs) no 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 I actually seriously remember doing the doing the scrolling and I found the board game barbecue and I decided to make a comment which wasn't common for me and uh Adrian uh, responded some way, and I remember thinking, "Oh, this is really exciting." That sounds like Adrian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Adrian <laughs> responded. Yeah, not, not to so. um, not to make your 
experience of finding the podcast in less special. But after I met Adrian for the first time, he messaged me for like an hour afterwards going, hey man, really nice to meet you. Hey, like what's this is my life story. What's yours? I was like, uh, and to cap it off, he wasn't even called Adrian Smith. Online, he went by the name Rogue One. Rogue One. Oh, he, didn't, he didn't want. <laughs> he didn't want people to know who he was. So I'm like, this guy don't know what it looks like. Yeah. Don't know his name. Just yep, we're best mates now. Deal with it. And, yeah, as I've <laughs> oh, said, I thought I was the only one he was messaging. Nah, nah. <laughs> he's. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel jilted. He's the donkey to my Shrek. We've said this many a times. It's well, just how it is. I didn't get message. I don't think. It, I'm not even sure Adrian has messaged me yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> and. There is a story behind that. I can't go back to the UK, so I use an alternative name and hopefully one day, once all that stuff settles down over there, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll return. So, What, to Tatooine? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, <laughs> pretty much. So basically, once the statute of limitations in the UK for the drug charges <laughs> expires, yeah. then pretty much. That's, he can yeah. do it. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Or is it? Or are you tied up with Julian Assange? I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Fair combination. Yeah. <laughs> True. Hey, one of the things that I really enjoyed when we first started, um, and it's sort of because we're running events now a bit more often, it has, doesn't happen as often, but the trivia episodes that Adrian used to cook up for us, mm. they were so much fun. I remember missing the first one. Uh, because I had a family do to go to, and I didn't realize how much effort AD put into those until I was in the second one. And it was, oh, geez, there was so much fun. We recorded it on a Friday night, so you just had that sweet Friday vibes, a couple of drinks in you, and, yeah, they were, it was a lot of fun. We even had a few cameos of people dropping in, and help. I think, did Matt Aslan come in one time to judge mm. a, mm-hmm. to judge a, it was like a crash game competition. jam, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 You had like 15 minutes to make a board game. Right. And that was it. I was yeah. like, this will be fine. They'll get it done. And I think randomly we chose a theme and a mechanic and different things. And Sam was mentioning about Shredder. And Jules was like, what's a Shredder? Yeah. And he'd never seen Ninja Turtles. And you guys were all like spent about six minutes of your 15 minutes, mind blown that he didn't know what Ninja Turtles was. And you just wasted valuable time. But that, some of the, those games were great. Like they came out really good. Well, I remember our team, we did some sort of pizza delivery yeah that's right delivery style but also in the vein of pandasaurus we also did a roll and write extra uh, extra oh, game right. as part of the campaign it sure. was something yeah. like pepperoli and right or something yes, like that's that. Right. that was jules's idea the pepperoli yeah, yeah. 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 pepperoli yeah. and right yeah. <laughs> memory on you young kids unbelievable yeah. uh, that, that was good fun well now hey, that we're back to nine Let's just say one of those is currently in the pipe work and being worked on as we speak. Right. So, oh, yeah. Love it. Well, I, uh, that's that's good for me because I think to date I'm the only member of the podcast, podcast who has not won one yet. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> right. You keep moving teams to try and <laughs> that's win. That's right. <laughs> Your team just loses. Well, you shuffle the teams up. Or I always yeah. end up on the losers team <laughs> because – you and me are both known as the biggest losers, i.e. because of our size, but also the fact that we lose the most. That makes you the biggest loser because yep. I've actually won one. So that actually, I'll, you know, I'll wear it. I'll wear it. Yeah. Okay. All right. For the time being. Yep. Well, Connor, you mentioned at the top that there was there could be some, some animosity for having Stephen Bonacore do the intro. Shall we reflect on, on Stephen's time on the show when specifically it. back when we were doing bracket battles <laughs> and... Connor had to. Connor was was during the bracket battle. Had to. Uh, he would. I think you were defending Root, but you yep. were going up against Terraforming, Terraforming Mars, Mars. Yeah. which was published by Stronghold Games, which which Stephen was involved in. Suffice to say, you got a little bit carried away. All right, go ahead, Connor. <laughs> Follow that up. So, <laughs> I'll try my best. So you you talk. Firstly, let's let's address the asteroid-sized elephant in the room. And you talked about Terraforming Mars having all the parts of a perfect game. Well, why would you want all the parts when the production doesn't look anywhere near the quality that Root has <laughs> and later games has provided? 
<laughs> the fact that you, the fact that your company, Stephen, had to bring out a Kickstarter for three D printed things to make people even want to have a look at this game, you know, that's, it's a business move. I'm not, I'm not knocking you for that. That's fine. And you might you might have Jay Kill that's a doctor of physics, but I don't want a doctor of physics anywhere near my games. I want a doctorate in enjoyment and in fun. That's what I want. Jay. That's what I'm looking for. Topical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stephen, you might be sitting on your Scrooge McDuck levels of money and being able to hire a shuttle to go to Mars, but poor old me, school teacher me, I'm going to watch that on the TV, so I don't care about how topical it is. I want to go into my little woods where I can see my little creatures battle one another, fight each other, all that type of stuff, because I just need a bit of escapism at the moment. I don't want real, I don't want real talk. I want escapism at the moment. But back to talking about the things that make Terraforming Mars so good. And I will, it'd be amiss of me not to say that it is a very, very good game. And these two would know that I actually don't big up the games that I'm against very often. So it is a great game and it does have variable player powers. But are they as variable as the different factions of Root? No. Like, it's kind of like saying, you know, you've got the variable player powers player powers and then that the that the cards in a pack of cards are different from one another just because they're different colors like you know it's not the same level of, of variable player powers you know it's just not the same. so and the game is so replayable and i've said it before root is a gamer's game it's a game made <laughs> be played by gamers again and again they they it, they've committed to supporting it long term, and just like you said for Terraforming Mars, you don't need to buy any expansions. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic as itself. In fact, you might even argue that the four factions in the base game are so perfectly balanced you wouldn't want any more. Um, I know people have made spreadsheets about who battles who, and then to see where they end up at the end to see who the best faction is out of all of them. Uh, you know, I, I totally understand that, you know, th- that Terraforming Mars at one point was number three on the BGG Top 100, but the fact that it's sliding down is now fourth. And uh, or maybe if I check the votes, you know, the votes is coming in, it looks like <laughs> the number four. <laughs> I don't know. It may have just dropped. <laughs> so, so, look, and just for Give last, time. here's my box of Terraforming Mars. Go over there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Mr. Trump, you have to give him his time. Don't, please, please don't interrupt Mr. Biden. Go ahead. Mr. Biden, continue. <laughs> uh, this is just too good. Uh, <laughs> Can we do this again so, next week? <laughs> <laughs> I want to blow, my, blow off my girlfriend for another, like, Friday night. That, you know, she's going to hate me. <laughs> uh, look, uh, i got to ask, done? do you, ha- Are you, do done, you have a retort? Honey? I'm done. Yes, I'm done. The defense. A right. retort? You want me to retort yeah. something like that? Listen, here's my <laughs> retort. I could agree with Connor, but then we both be wrong. So I will not agree with him because he's wrong. He's wrong on every level. So was that you throwing terraforming masks across yeah. the room? I, I sort of had this really plain gag where because I knew it was going to happen. I just got the lid and I literally flung it across like my room and then Stephen lost it. He just was like, what are you doing? And yeah, I mean, that was, that was, that was such a fun uh, recording to do as well. It sounded way more brutal than I remember it. <laughs> you came across <laughs> like a total dick. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so harsh. Uh, oh, it's like when we compiled all the old gags together for poor Dan, it sounded way worse. You know, like yeah, it, it sounded bad, but it's brilliant. It was I've dug that I've dug those out too, you prick. But that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a community member listening to that and thinking, wow, Connor's really got some stones to kind of <laughs> face someone who produces the game and tell them it's shit. <laughs> <What's> it <laughs> so from behind the scenes, had you kind of set that up with Steven beforehand? We, no. we had said I think he had understood like that I was going to sort of get stuck into it and he was okay with it. He was 100% on board. I mean, Stephen, if you're listening and you weren't, I apologise immensely. <laughs> um, thank you for the intro, by the way. Uh, yeah, that uh, we, we'd said, you know, we sort of get stuck into the games that, and we're supposed to be promoting it and all that type of stuff. But, yeah, no, I didn't tell him I was going to throw the box across the room. So 
and then when he mentioned like the the production, I was like, "Here we go! This is it! This is my this, this is like my in." So, yeah, no, it was heaps of fun, and you know, at times the bracket battles could sort of get, become a bit of a drag. But when you had someone on the other side that was really, you know, it's effectively his his money maker. It wasn't a terraforming Mars, so that's why I, had, I just and I was like, "I'm never going to have another chance to do this." So, hey, why not? Is that your favorite episode you've been on with a guest, Connor? I, I think so. Another one. Yeah, no, okay. I, I, I think so because he, he himself was fantastic as well. He was cracking gags. He was making fun of us. Um, I know at one time, I think I had my Patriots beanie on. He was calling me Patsy and stuff like that. He was just, you know, and he runs a podcast himself and has run podcasts. He knows what's entertaining. And he was so nice in such the early stages of the podcast to give us that time so yeah i think mm. i mean i've been on with some incredible guests but i think in terms of fun that was definitely my top one i bet he that- didn't realize he was going up against a seasoned veteran in the <laughs> <though. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> who who I, I already i had an axe to grind after jules uh <laughs> poop yeah. can the game so i was like that's it this is my baby i need to protect it so just to confirm as a newbie are we allowed to do that <laughs> what slam games <laughs> yeah like are we allowed to act like that so can no. i do this in the future no no i uh, being the oh, biggest well, member of the podcast done? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if Damn. you go to six foot five <laughs> and cover your back in hair <laughs> <laughs> live in a forest <laughs> live in a forest <laughs> and uh then maybe hang on hang on don't now border. it's not just his back Uh, Rhymes with back. (laughs) (laughs) So when we reached out to the community for some of their highlights, the bracket battle came up. Came up. um, Draven actually mentioned the bracket battle as well, but his favourite was Jules slagging off Root. And I I tried to find find where the episode was. I couldn't actually find it. But Jules slagging off Root, and now it's actually in his top ten. Now it's in his top ten. What have you got to say for yourself, Jules? Uh, how the turns table. <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, it, it's the old adage, you know, playing a board game once doesn't necessarily mean you have the right to uh, to comment on it. I think most games, yeah, probably most games of that weight deserve multiple plays before you really know what's going on. Again, it was so funny as a community member. I think that those root bracket battles are when I would get the most activated, and like yeah. I would like, I would like post the bracket battle in like the root Reddit and like the root yes, Facebook to try and right. get people to come and come and vote for root. It was very funny. I'm pretty sure I remember you, Joe, saying a few times like Jules. I don't understand. I'm pretty sure you love this yeah. game. It's you. <laughs> you were right. You were right. Yeah. I suppose another one of the dangers of not playing a game, sort of very often is that when you come to talk about it, something like this happens. Um, so uh, the other, actually, in fact, it was last night, um, Sunday night, just hanging at home. And I said to my partner, go for my uh, rather large pile of board games, go and grab one that you'd like to play that takes your interest in. Lo and behold, she comes out holding a uh, Makaraibo. So uh, Makaraibo is a... Um, a board game by Alexander uh, Fister, and he also made a Great Western Trail. So it's a a sandbox type um, Euro game with a bit of tableau building in it too. And um, the reason it surprised me is if you haven't played it, um, it's quite complex. It's quite complex. Yeah, particularly it's... the name. <laughs> <laughs> no, now, a lot of people wouldn't have actually heard of that heard that episode because we buried it in the archives. I dug it out. We did share it with our Patreons uh, last year as epi- as episode zero. We build it, hmm. but um, there was a, that, there was there was a, a few things we, that went wrong that episode. Well, so. I was going to say you didn't let the uh, clip go long enough to end for the bit where you mistook West, Great Western Trail for Western Legends. Oh, you mean this, you mean this bit here? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've only ever played a, um, a sandbox game once. It was a Western one that I played at PAX last year. I can't remember what yeah. the, what it was called. Was it Great Western Trail? It sound, that sounds right, yeah. yeah. No, now, hang on. let the record show. Hang on, yeah. I'm with you, Dan. Go. <laughs> the witness was led. The witness <laughs> was led. <laughs> <laughs> 
But again, I didn't know any better either, so I just went along with it. <laughs> he, he must be right. He knows what he's talking about this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. was your first mistake. <laughs> this guy, this guy here knows what he's talking about. No. Oh, he never made that mistake again. <laughs> no. All Sorry. my pronunciations were, mispronunciations, I should say, were on purpose. I'm going that at, from mm. that point on, they were definitely on purpose. What, um, while we're... While we're on Great Western Trail, I did actually go onto the podcast and tell everyone how I'd been playing it wrong for however many years. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I didn't realise in terms of the drawing the cards back up. Everyone everyone since then has said to me, how on earth did you even manage to play that game when you weren't redrawing your hand? Well, I don't know. It was really, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> One of the hardest games I've ever played. <laughs> so, but, yeah, but it's just thinking back to how, how young and naive we were to have to, to try a hand at podcasting and think that you know, mistakes weren't going to happen. So it was, we were bungling up names of games and we we're even bumbling, bungling up our own, uh, our own bloody segments. At least we can definitely say for one thing has improved. The sound quality's improved. Yeah. Because <laughs> Connor <laughs> sounded like he was using a tin can. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded so far away. I mean, away. it sounded like he was. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure this, this isn't going to give people any more faith in the podcast that hasn't already been lost. But I'm pretty sure I actually had a microphone at that point, and I hadn't actually set it up to use, and I was using the the um the headset. the microphone <laughs> off my <laughs> off my Apple uh, headphones. So yeah, I mean it's it's come and leaves and bounds. I think the the way that it's edited now, you guys do a fantastic job. So there's for those of you who who don't. Know what goes on behind the scenes? There's a group of four or five of our crew that does the editing, and I think if you please don't, but if you listen yeah. back to our very early episodes compared to now, it is almost like a different medium, in my opinion. So mm. thanks to you guys, um, and I'm, I'm still telling people that that was an AI bot, and episode zero does not actually <laughs> exist. So I'm going with that. Yeah, yeah, we've come a long way. We would definitely never make mistakes like this. Thanks to everyone who's um, contributed to our pod of the question. And I'm going to launch the, the new question the of the question. I'm going to say pod of the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to put up that pod of the question. Uh, Jace threw that, the, uh, the classic one out there, the Def, Def just mentioned Chef. A chess, sorry. Chef? <laughs> chef is a good game. Chef, chef, yeah. chef. Uh, oh, I playing chess back when I was a kid. Chess when you play chess with deaf. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, che- that's deaf chess. We had a lot of requests for for, for chef. Well, yeah. for, for chef. There's nothing. But, there's nothing quite like though sitting back and listening to all those outtakes and just having a nice sip of crumpets. Yeah, that's my <laughs> favourite. Here's the thing: I tried to find that and I couldn't find the origin of it. Do you remember the origin of drinking crumpets? Oh, I don't. I think Adrian it was a was bracket battle. It was a I bracket battle where we were going on and because I'm British, you were mocking me about something and you said, oh, you can sit around drinking crumpets. And I was like, you don't even drink crumpets. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know what happened. But yeah, was, I remember you saying it for sure. It was just, so, just Dra- Draven Ray's drinking crumpets as one of his favourites. Mm. And Stace, Stace said um, uh, Macaribo. So just in case we need to reference it later. Macaribo. 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 I can just I can just drop these in, Chef. Chef. <laughs> nice. Just a couple. And one of my personal favourites. At one point, Haig rubbed the fecal salve over himself. Yeah. So. <laughs> the weird part was that was 100% true. It, it, yeah. it wasn't a mispronunciation or a no. fumble. And that was before they started playing Kingdom Death <laughs> 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 I think my highlights, my favourite episodes that I've been on are the ones that I've done with the Motor City Gameworks guys. Um, they're just an absolute cracking bunch of guys. I feel like they have the same sense of humour as us. Uh, their podcast I listen to and it cracks me up all the time and uh, I just had a great time. I don't know if I can specifically remember like any quotes or, or events or things that happened, but if you know, I, I sit back and think about my time over the last four years, they're definitely for me. The, uh, the standouts. So, so that'll be um, Matt Riddle, Ben Pinchbeck, and uh, Adam Hill. Adam Hill. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, great guys. For myself, I've just, I have really enjoyed talking to the designers more than I thought I would because I never knew about design. Like, and I really wasn't, I was really not massively into this hobby before I started the podcast. So I've kind of, my tastes and change in games have evolved as the podcast has also evolved. 
and being able to hang out with people like Simone Luciani and play test the latest versions of Barrage and ask, being asked for my feedback on stuff and then meeting Tomasu, who's the co-designer, and Simone describing me in Italian as a Barrage crazy who had <laughs> a birthday cake that was made like from barrage items and stuff and playing against him in that game was amazing. Cause I'd never get the, I've played against Simone a heap of times before while playtesting, but then playtesting with Tomasu was amazing. And these are kind of all these, um, all these moments have all sprung from this podcast. If I didn't have this podcast and I wasn't part of this group, I wouldn't have had these opportunities. So, you know, the amount of work that we put in behind the scenes is astronomical. And I feel that, we are very lucky that we get these kind of side benefits that I never thought would come from doing content creation. So yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to some of those people that I really admire in the design field. So yeah, I can echo that sentiment, Adrian. I don't do play testing anymore simply because I, you know, try to spend more time away from, from my screens. But I remember those times when we, um, you, me, um, Connor, Sarah, we play tested um, Weather Machine with with Vital, and you know that that spawned off from the the interview we had on the podcast with him, which was one of my favorites. I've been trying to remember, you know, which guest interviews I'd enjoyed the most, and uh, so that was one. Obviously, as he was my my favorite designer, I always love having Paul Grogan on the podcast. He's been on. Um, more than once, and I uh, always have a great time speaking with him. And the third one I want to mention is one that never made it public, unfortunately, due to a technical error, which which caused us to, to lose the whole interview. And that was the most incredible dis- insight to de- design thought and process of Adam Kapinski. And the chat with him so, was so fascinating. We, we sort of tried to get him back on and re-record the conversation, but unfortunately it never happened. But I remember almost like sitting at the edge of my chair and uh, listening to him explain how he wanted to recreate that old, uh, you know, uh, sense of horror from the old science fiction, 1940s and 50s science fiction stories in, in Nemesis. So I think... I like what you said about getting insight into the design process has been fascinating. But ultimately, for me, what these four years and 300 episodes have been about is I've made uh, some some very, very close friends, uh, both within this group, but also within the community. And especially after moving from Melbourne to Brisbane, I don't, I, I would never think it would have been achieved without without being part of the podcast. So you know there's there's a few things that I'll probably share at l- later in 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 our schedule in this podcast so talking about designers if i had to pick a favorite <clears throat> uh probably interviewing Cole Worley just because i'm such a massive fan of all the work design work he's done at Leader Games as well as through Worley Gig his own publishing company that's my favorite one i haven't been on <laughs> ah there you go <laughs> but it just the time, I, I cannot remember a thing about that podcast right now because of the time difference. I think it was me and Connor were on that episode. Oh, and Adrian, that's right. We just had to stay up later than usual. And it finished some time between 1 and 2 a.m. And I was just so tired. I didn't remember anything. And I wish I had been more awake to formulate more articulate questions and, and <laughs> be able to really dig even deeper into that conversation but it, regardless like such an enjoyable interview cole's an amazing and would have him back in a heartbeat that's for sure i've um i've never been under any um illusions about my intelligence level but talking to cole just showed me he is a very very smart person he's a, a different breed in a world he? Oh. <laughs> in a world full of smart people who design video games like he was just next level it was very very incredible and again i was similar to you where it was late and I was like, oh man, like I really want to know more, but I was so tired. So Same. again, thank you to Cole for putting up with effectively our delirious jibber jabber and yeah. coming out with something <laughs> that was worth of something of substance. 
That was such a good podcast. I wasn't on the pod yet, obviously, when listening to that. I was actually, I distinctly remember listening it to the to it though, because I was on a hike and oh. I was so enthralled by the podcast that I missed the marker for the trail and ended up lost <laughs> for like two and a half hours <laughs> oh, trying oh. to backtrack. <laughs> oh. My goodness. So I would have died happy though, because what a pod. Wow. That's a great story. <laughs> I've also, I've gone back and looked, and I mentioned it when we just before we recorded with Cole. I seem to get all the doctors and the professors that I end up being the host for, and I, well, as soon as I find out, I freak out because I'm like, I feel like I'm definitely, yeah, not the most intellectual of people, and I, I just like, oh my god, they're they're super clever people, and I, I've got to be kind of onto it, but it, it always works out in the end, like, you know, I just have a few days and calm my farm and <laughs> it goes well. But yeah, it's always been, it's, it is a bit nerve wracking when you have guests as well. And that's something else that we didn't really talk about or haven't really spoken about is like the first couple of times, especially at the start, having some of these big guests on, it's very nerve wracking for the technical aspect, for the smoothness of the podcast, for the recording, the editing, all of that other stuff that happens behind the scenes. But you also have to formulate questions and conversations with people that is engaging, interesting, fun, and you've never spoken to them before yeah. in your life. Yeah, and super it's, challenging. Yeah, and it's some people ease straight into it and it, it's very fluid and it becomes very quick. But some people, they, they come on and they're a little bit more introverted and quiet. But by the midway point, they really start to open up. And we've, you know, that's one of the benefits to having returning guests is that you already have skipped all of that for the most part. And it's just straight into interesting conversation and, and what you've been up to. But, well, well yeah. if they're returning, then you assume that they can at least tolerate us. Like they Correct. might not necessarily like us, but they can tolerate us and, and want to be on the show. So yeah, they're <laughs> always having a returning guest is fun because you have that banter already going on. And we bring in, I know Dan always, the last time we we're on with Bobby Hill, he actually looked <laughs> up his oath. And, and Bobby was like, yeah, I've actually done that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And, and in a way, when you are on with a guest and you, you're not familiar with their work or you're not necessarily a fan, it actually, you delve into, oh, okay, so who is this person? Let's find out a bit more. And I feel like we've always had really awesome feedback from the host being like, you guys were, oh, I had no idea that you'd looked into that that much. And that's been a fun experience as well. Yeah, it's actually funny. I, I can't remember who gave feedback once we finished recording once, but they said something along the lines of like, you guys ask really different questions. And I don't think they meant like, those are bad questions. <laughs> At least like, it didn't feel like it came across that way. But because I, I, I think it came from a place of we're not people that have been, you know, working in the industry and interview lots of designers and or have any kind of uh, substantive um, media training or anything like that. And so obvious, the yeah. questions... <laughs> 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 so the questions that we pose to the people that we interview really do come from a place of genuine curiosity and excitement to talk to them and our perspective as just regular people enjoying the board game hobby. I believe that that was Orange Nebula that said that, Jules, because oh, yeah, there you go. we spoke about community for about 45 minutes and about 15 minutes of board games. And it yeah. was really, really good. Super yeah. insightful. So I love when you have an impression of how a guest is going to be, especially when they're a personality. Joe, when we interviewed Emily, I know this was only really recently, but just exactly how you imagine her to be was just exactly how she was talking to her the whole time that was such a fun fun podcast to record my gosh it was really fun it, it felt really high octane like it felt like we had to like match emily's level uh, <laughs> laura and i and so i think you know it was yeah it was it was really fun you're a high octane go oh, there's another ble- there's another ble- <laughs> blooper for you dan clip that one yeah let edit that it, it, <laughs> you're a high octane <laughs> octane <laughs> 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 oh. You are a high octane guy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So you know you sure. fit right in. I'm sure. Sure. 
<laughs> no, that, def- that definitely came through. I remember when we, we interviewed Monique and Naveen and I just couldn't get the fact that I've watched their, their content for so long, but looking at them across on Zencaster, they were sitting in the exact same positions they normally yes. sit when they do their playthroughs. I'm like, you, you, do you always sit on the same side when you enter a room or you sit on a couch <laughs> or whatever? And But I also remember going through all their content, which I'd seen before and they didn't have very many interviews, but then I somehow got onto a tangent where Monique had been playing uh, guitar on a separate little one of her Instagram channels. And so I asked them about their, their music and they were so su- surprised, but so happy to talk about something other than board games because we'd just done a little bit of research into what they do outside of board gaming and they, they were really chuffed. So, mm. yeah, that was really rewarding. Mm. And who would have thought we would ever have been nominated for two Golden Geek Awards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that happened. <laughs> well, we must yeah, be doing something crazy. right. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, we're well then speaking of that, I thought what we could do is we could sort of pivot out of out of sort of the podcast side of things and start to talk about the um oh oh sorry, there's someone at the door, guys. I'm just gonna have to um Hey Tim, it's Vital here. Just wanted to drop in and say a massive congratulations on reaching three hundred episodes of the board game BBQ podcast. That's incredible and an amazing milestone. And a huge thanks for being such great playtesters for my games along the way. Cheers to many more episodes and playtesting adventures ahead. Keep up the fantastic work. Bye. Hi, it's Jay Ben Dixon here. I just wanted to say congrats to all the barbecue team, past and present, on a huge milestone of 300 episodes. Thanks for keeping us all well fed with all the board game sizzles, for hosting epic game days, and for creating a great community. Plus, I wanted to say a massive thank you for supporting Australian game designers like myself with shout outs and opportunities to share our creations with the barbecue community all over the world. Here's to many more pods, game days, and whatever else you've got cooking. Hey, this is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and I just wanted to congratulate the Board Game Barbecue for your 300th episode. That really is incredible. I think consistency and endurance are two of the most difficult things with content creation. And not only have you kept it up for 300 episodes, but you've also kept it up with a great attitude and energy uh, and excitement, level of excitement for games that I really admire and appreciate. Keep it up. I look forward to listening to the next 300 episodes to come. Hey, everyone. This is TK King with Kins and Key Games. Just wanted to say congrats on your 300th episode. Hello, Board Game Barbecue friends. It's Amy and Maggie here from Thema. Hello, we are so excited to be part of this and be able to say a huge congratulations on 300 episodes. What an achievement. Now, we've been reflecting on the things that you could have been doing instead of making 300 episodes <laughs> of this podcast. Did you know you could have watched every single episode of The Simpsons? That's 700 episodes of The Simpsons. Or you also could have loosely learned to speak a new language. Si, sí, muy bien. <laughs> um, or you could have actually walked from Germany to Italy in the time that it's taken you to record all of yeah. these podcasts. Cast. Or you could do any of those things and listen to the 300 episodes of the Board Game Barbecue podcast while you're doing it, which is probably the best. <laughs> the best <laughs> so, option. So yeah. really, we just want to say congratulations for how you've decided to use yeah. your time. <laughs> no, we love jokes, you very jokes, much. jokes. Yes. We love you so much. And thank you for everything that you do for this community and for board gaming in Australia. 300 episodes. What a yeah. huge well achievement. Done. Yeah. And please keep doing what you're doing. Look into forward to the 300 more see you soon bye so anyway as i was saying sorry that was really rude um (laughs) (laughs) how awesome is that That, that's pretty good awesome that's great they said we could walk to italy though that little day i know i couldn't walk to the end of my street So anyway, I thought we'd open up the floor too, not just the, just the uh, podcast episodes, but everything else that we've done in the last four years as well. I'm talking about game days and South by Southwest and PAX and whatnot. Has anyone any, got any um, special memories? I'll jump in because you said South by Southwest there. I, so South by Southwest, you know, maybe it wasn't the best convention that ever ever happened or that we've ever been to, but uh, it's. I think it'll hold a special place for me because we 80 came down early. We had sort of a week. We started for the whole South by so even before the gaming component had sort of started we we started heading in 
and we just essentially just spent a week hanging out with uh, with each other, hanging out with uh, the boys, my boys. So we, we we all went in there. Then Dan, you joined us a couple of days later, uh, and you know the group gradually grew and grew and grew as we got closer to the um, to the event. And once we were sort of all all there, with the exception of Def, who was missing unfortunately, but um, being able to be there with everyone, experience all the different events, and not just the gaming stuff, but just being able to be in those places with the team and with you know our number one Patreons and supporters from the community and people that have been with us, uh, and it really just did feel like a family. And I, I personally was really appreciative that everyone took my boys in as well and made them feel part of it. So yeah, that that for me was amazing. I really will look back on that with fond memories. It's definitely one of the things that we haven't really hit on, but. It's definitely one of the most important is that it feel like we've become like a family. These are people that I didn't know four years ago. And now, like, not to sound too creepy, I've got Mitch's son's number in my phone and I can text him happy birthday and be like, hey, man, happy birthday. Have a good time. What are you up to? You know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's been really great to see Brad come to the first retreat when he was like, I don't even know how old, like 16 or something or 17. And now he's like 21 and, you know, he's got a job and a car and all this other stuff going on. And then we get to hang out South by Southwest and, you know, he pops his head in and says hello. And it's just kind of cool. It does feel like the family. It feels like, yeah, it feels like an episode of Friends or something. You know, like they come in, they come out. And I think I've just, I've basically stayed at Dan's and Mitch's for all these different events when we've gone to them. And yeah, it's been great to hang around with, Dan's family as well, and the boys waking up in the morning and like wrestling in the playroom, and you know, or they're just- coming in to wake you up, and then yes. Jack was just t- t- Jack was just telling you about Pokemon for thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the best. Yeah, so it's been great. That's a, been a really cool byproduct of this whole podcast. Is just you know, and as it's for me as well, especially like I didn't have any even friends when I was in Brisbane. I relatively new to the country in a way. It's no surprise. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, like I didn't, I didn't, ha- and board gaming kind of helped that, and then the podcast and meeting all these other people and traveling, and like you guys have all made it extra special. And yeah, it's been great. Like it's, it did. Yeah, South by Southwest was great. It's just really felt family like the whole way through. So yeah. Well, speaking of family, uh, well, we've done packs. Tw- we've done packs twice now. Twice now. The first time we actually were we were able to mark out a bit of territory in the um in the play free play area and teach games just like we do with the, the gaming days which was great fun but it was really taxing so last year having the opportunity to just more to go around and interview people and and chat to the community and people coming up to us going oh listen to you guys that was really really cool but the highlight for me was the patreon breakfast that we did where we pretty much took over half of a venue outside on on the river and we had 30, 40 people show up just to grab coffee and quick bacon and eggs before we all head, head into PAX. But it was really great having people from up interstate coming and we had a bunch of content creators stick their head in and, and meet the Patreons and it was just such a rewarding little family um, that, 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 we've, that we're lucky enough to be a part of with our Patreons. And then um, we got to have lunch with Phil Walker-Harding and, and Matty Dunstan too on the Sunday. That was awesome. So they... Yeah. Did a panel, which heaps of people turn out for, was super interesting, and they sort of went through design philosophies and stuff like that. And there were a lot of budding or game designers looking to sort of get a foot in the door. And then we just sat down at the at the brew house, and they ordered the big tower of beer, and I was, which I, Phil I, only I, wanted one pint of, yeah. and then Matt drank the rest. <laughs> and then I, felt, I felt awful because I had to drive back to Warrnambool that after, like literally as soon as that interview finished. And I didn't want to. I was like, oh, can I get another day off work? And can I call in <laughs> sick on the Monday? Because you guys just look like you're having an absolute ball. So that mm. was, that's something, there's no way, there's no way I would have envisaged four years ago sitting down with some board game designers at lunch and going through and having an interview with them. It was just a, an amazing opportunity. Well, we only interviewed, our interview was very short and then the meals came and then we kept talking and that would, it was such a great chat. We're like, oh, we should be recording this. This is awesome. But it was just nice to be able to just chat about the industry itself. And they talked to us like we were a part of the industry where I've never really felt like I am. I've always got that sort of imposter syndrome. Like who the hell am I to talk about, you know, you know, board games or interview people. But they just looked at us and just went, hey, you're one of us and we'll just talk about what you guys do and what we guys do. And yeah, it was just a real privilege. Actually, South by Southwest was a, 
an eye opener for me because that was the first time that I'd actually met really everybody and uh, Lauren and I met for the first time and you know we were only new so it was great to meet everybody but I didn't realize how much of a tight following because at the at that time I really wasn't involved in discord at all I'd only really just been on Facebook and just to see the tight following and how everybody sort of got together really like a, a family was such an an eye-opener for me and that was the first time that I'd ever met a designer before as well I I we were playing games at um at one of the venues at South by Southwest and this quite sh- short skinny guy was playing games with us and I, I wasn't sure of his name I've got a terrible memory anyway and we ordered uh, we went up to the bar and ordered hot chips and I, I looked at him and I said, oh, well, what's your name? And he said, oh, Matthew. And I went, I looked, I sort of my, you know, closed my eyes a little bit and went, surname. <laughs> and he said, Dunstan. And I went, oh, 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 my God. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, he said, I don't like to tell people my surname. So, yeah, it was really lovely. It was a great experience. I think for me, I just did echo what everyone else said the favorite part for me for the from the podcast is the community I think the friends we've made all across the country is just their memories that I'll kind of cherish for forever one of my favorites was going to Sydney for the powerhouse gaming event and hanging out with the team and other patreons and especially that patreon party we had at that uh, at that pub where yes. we were all just kind of chatting like we were old friends and speaking about non-board game related things, uh, even though I'd never met most of the people in person before. Uh, it's just really special. And even, you know, having Ian O'Toole there that pretty much that whole weekend, mm-hmm. come across from Perth, just such a lovely, chill guy um, to get along with. I think it's very different than other media kind of collectives in particular around like cinema or film or TV, for example. Or even video games. I think that that connection to the designers and other people, I think, is very different in the board gaming space. It's so so great. One thing I mentioned before, quickly, and I wanted to expand a bit on is, you know, it, it sometimes this works the other way around. It's not just us creating and fostering a community. It, it, it's it, this community kind of you know exists. So we 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 help by you know the podcast and the content creation the game days to, to bring new people in and make them feel welcome and everything but that that works both ways and i, I i'm not going to forget we had this brisbane game day and i was new to brisbane and uh i don't get along in big crowds figure, go figure and one of our community members uh sent me a message and said look uh, i because at that point i wasn't going to the game day i wasn't i, I couldn't go um, messaged me and said, look, uh, how about you come along? Um, I'll bring my copy of Eclipse and uh, my friend is going to be there and the three of us can play a game of Eclipse. And so that gave me a way out to say, okay, well, I can go without the pressure of, you know, the social interaction with 150 people. And it, it, it sort of took all of that away and, and helped me ease into these these game days and, you know, these days, you know, people know me for teaching all the heavy games every time, and uh, which is, you know, a role I'm very happy to play now. But what I mean by that is, you know, as much as we help other people, I feel I've been helped in, in that area as well from members of our own community, and I'm very grateful for that. That's a, that is a good story. But And on the other side of that, one of the big kind of things that I take away from our community in game days, there was... I think we've talked about it in the past. I won't use names or anything, but there was a person who arrived at <clears throat> one of the Sydney game days and they were very, I could just tell that they had that sort of anxiety of being there. You know, it's something we've all experienced to some degree, uh, you know, but this person just clearly wasn't comfortable in that social setting. Uh, and as soon as I noticed that at the door, it was like, I'll take that person. I'll walk around with them, and just being able to put a little bit of time—it's not a—it's not a huge amount of effort, you know—to to to just make a huge amount of difference. And 
you know, just walking around with them, talking to other people, introducing them to other people, getting them set up in a game. And that person went from being, I'm not saying just because of me, but because of our community, right? Because we were the door to that community. And then the, that commu- the community as a whole has then embraced them and made them feel welcome and brought them in along board. And now that person has been to, I couldn't even tell you how many game days, travels interstate to come to game days and is, is almost like a piece of the furniture at our game days and, you know, would consider you know, one of the one of the you know ongoing loyal members and people that just come along and has probably done the same thing for others in turn. So to be able to see that sort of evolution of how it's gone from where they were when they walked in that day to, you know, where they are fitting into this is is really an example of what is capable, what is possible when everybody comes together like that. We we've often mentioned when we've met all together and when we talk to people and even on live podcasts, how proud we are of the community. And that's definitely something that for me at times has, has kept me going, knowing that I've got really good friends in the community, knowing that there's people who want to listen to what I've got to say. And that's never been more evident as to when I've traveled to Sydney, I've traveled to Brisbane, and I get greeted by these people who are like, oh, it's Connor, Connor's here. And it, it wouldn't, it's not just because people hear my, our voices all the time. It's not just because we're on these, we're moderating discords or Facebook pages. It's, it's because they genuinely, our community genuinely loves to care and, and, and help out people who are interested in board games, who want to be part of the community as well. Like that's, it's, and it's something that again, it, it started happening organically, but is the way it is because our community is so amazing. It, I, I honestly think that it's, it's, got less to do with us and all to do with the people who are listening, going to game days and effectively setting the standard to having such an inclusive environment. I think part of the surprise too, Connor, is that people like are amazed that you've made it from the outback into Brisbane. <laughs> like, that's, Most of I'm us not, are like, surprised that he can walk on two feet, to be honest. Yeah, so, it's not on fours. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's just what I do during the day. I have to rest at home. so In your cave. <laughs> <laughs> what people forget Mitch isn't that much shorter and he's bald so that's the only reason he doesn't get called hairy like me I don't, I don't understand that is actually quite funny at game days when you guys are there and people turn up and you speak to them and they actually don't know what you look like mm. and you can see them processing the voice and like me like they become like oh almost speechless sort of when they recognise who you are. It's quite funny. Did you Especially, have an example of that, Dana, did you? Yes, that did happen to me at one <laughs> point. <laughs> I've spoken about it. Uh, I think it's hilarious speaking about the voice, and this is something that's happened from the start with me and Connor, is people continue, even to today, people will say, I can never tell the difference between you and Connor. Like, I uh, I mean, obviously, I'm used to my voice, so I can easily tell. But yeah, I think it's a bizarre. Little I, I, I've met you before. A guy who I've known since my first university was like, "I don't know when when you and Mitch are on the episodes together. I don't know when one of you are speaking, the other one's not." I said, "Bro, <laughs> we live together. We, we live together for two and a half years, and you can't tell my voice." It's like, "Well, it's not my problem. You need to." Which is why I speak the way I do. Like, I don't normally speak with this country drawl i you know it's to separate me and mitch's voice <laughs> which brings me to a back to another memorable favorite from past episodes of the episode where i sat in and did every alternate segment without actually saying i was there oh that's right to see if anyone picked up on it i was going to mention that <laughs> i totally forgot about that until just now so someone did say to me, "You guys thought you were really funny, weren't you?" It wasn't. It was totally obvious, like that it was you and Mitch. I was like, "No, no, no, you, you, you didn't know. You didn't know until the end that it was me and Mitch, like alternating." Yeah. Speaking of speaking of episodes, I've got a couple other highlights that I thought I would share with you guys. It kind of goes le- less about the the content, more about just the unprofessionalism. <clears throat> Excuse me, just to clear my throat before I. Uh... Think about what we were talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst. You are the worst. Our secret segment is going to be us giggling for 30 minutes. <laughs> All right, okay. 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Okay. Just read again. It's 100% your fault. <laughs> I see it's hundred percent my fault. I knew I was good. And then when we started, that was in Connor's white with his tears out of his eyes. This is the shambles. <laughs> Funnily enough, when Adrian just said Connor's wiping the tears out of his eyes, Connor was wiping the tears <laughs> out of his eyes. <laughs> Oh, I definitely are bad for the giggles. Like if I start, there's been a few where we haven't been able to start for about five minutes because I just keep laughing and just like at the retreat, I have to leave the room, get a drink, refresh and sit down. And I'd sometimes when we hit record, I won't even look at the camera. I'll look away until we start because I can't, I can't stop. That, oh, that, the, the fact that I couldn't even look in your general direction when we were recording that very first awards because I would just laugh and I didn't even say anything and Adrian would just laugh at me just because he knew that I was trying to hold in the laugh. It was like the the stacking of the cups. It was like just don't don't stack it wrong. Don't laugh. Oh, yeah. oh man, some my my belly ached for ages after recording that because of all the laughing that was going on. Yeah, I think if you went back and looked at the first barbecue awards that we filmed, there'll be certain edits that you'll see where someone's presenting, but they've still got tears in their eyes from the <laughs> 10 minutes leading up to it where everyone was just winding each other up and just the laughter was just just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. But we've got to stop. Let's just take a breather and then we'll start recording again. But we did actually edit the, the bloopers, so they're on our YouTube channel as well for anyone who hasn't seen them. I don't remember what got us started on that, but that was, that was off the hook. Mm-hmm. That was... That was a whole nother level. I think I remember, but I won't say in case we start again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to know. Uh, <laughs> while we're on the ret- retreat in general was amazing. I think it was a pivotal part of us coming together as a group uh, and helping to build the relationships that we did uh, because it was it was a phenomenal few days and some, yeah, some memories that last forever. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Way back in COVID times. Mm-hmm. Was a, was yeah, we weren't sure if it was going to go ahead or not because yeah, like yeah. darting for borders and stuff. <laughs> go, go, go! We're going to get out. Let's go. <laughs> Just a question for the veterans: Do you believe that if COVID hadn't happened, you wouldn't be doing this podcast? I mean, it's hard to say, but I mean, I was interested in board gaming regardless. But whether or not I would have been as committed to doing it because, you know, we had a lot of time on our hands and we were looking for something to do at home. Who knows? I think it's a good chance it wouldn't have. Mm. Yeah. I've quite often said one of the reasons I played so many board games at the time was because I was so sick of staring at my screen and I needed a break. Uh, And that's probably what effectively I was going to more and more board game groups on Facebook trying to find different games to play because I'd played so many of my own. Yeah, that's... um, uh, yeah, it'd be another a more interesting slant on that would be would it have continued if we started it beforehand? Because I, knowing every knowing you guys and and the people that we started it with, like I wouldn't trade it for the world. But yeah, it's a, I, I can't answer that one way or another. Sorry, Dana. I know you like a definitive answer, but I, I can't mm. give it to you. Oh. Mm. I'd been I'd already started my Instagram page, player on your left, where I was starting to post board game content. But and I wanted to try and do some sort of interview style something but I just I didn't have the guts to pull the trigger really so the, when this came along it was the perfect timing for me to actually do it in the comfort still stepping out of my comfort zone but doing it with with other people so it sort of it was a bit of a, a salvation for me when, when when this came along because it was a, a, an avenue into doing something that I wanted to do but I was really just too scared to actually venture just to, into doing it myself so yeah, it was just perfect timing for me. And you're right, we, it was a sweet spot for, for us, but it was also probably a good time for the community as well for to be able to put something out there that people were probably looking for. If the lockdowns and stuff weren't happening, we might not have picked up the audience as quickly as we did. I'd like to think we would have we would have eventually got a, a pretty decent community, but we certainly gained a lot of traction really quickly. And um, I think that's a testament probably to the, our approach to it all, but also just everyone was everyone was like like Def was saying before about the community already existed, but they were very welcoming of mm. us and what we were trying to do. Come on, call it how it is. The, the reason we took off quickly was because of Connor's family. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the first 75 members of the uh, Facebook yes. community were all and divides. Whenever, whenever I see post a, a photo of Connor's games that he's playing or whatever, you're, I don't know whether it's your sister 
or your parents or whatever, there's always family posting afterwards. Yeah, it's usually my mum. <laughs> when you um when you put up that clip of me of the interview yeah. uh, she was like oh i'm so proud of him and she shared it on oh. her own facebook page and all that <laughs> so stuff. cute yeah so wholesome yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. joe's joe's met um, my mum before and um yeah so, no and again it i don't know what your families are like but my family they were like, this is amazing. This is incredible. I remember playing the first episode for my brother just randomly. I was like, oh, do you want to listen to a podcast while we just sort of hang out? He's like, yeah, no worries. And it started playing. And I think we had sort of Steve do the, the intro and then it went to Dan. And then it was me. And he looked at me and was like, that's you. And I was like, no, no, we're going to release it soon. And he's like, that's amazing. And he just sort of lost it after that. But yeah, like, um, my, they're, they're great supporters of, of, of everything we do. And, and they, they have heard me talk about all of you ad nauseum and they sort of ask what so and so's up to and all that stuff. So yeah, it's really nice. Are they going to be coming to PlayCon and they're going to have pictures of your face? <laughs> The baby photos album chewed on their skin. <laughs> Dana, we know if there's anyone on this podcast that doesn't need their ego stroked, it's me. So no, they will not be coming uh, to PlayCon, unfortunately. Uh, but that would be nice. That's uh, another point as well that we're making about family. There, just a massive thanks to all our families who give us the right. time to do all this stuff Absolutely. because there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and especially with things like PlayCon and the South by Southwest stuff and the Pack stuff that really does use a lot of time to to get right so yeah massive thanks to all of our families who let us continue to talk on a microphone and act like fools so yeah for sure um well i might hand the reins hand the reins over to def because def's got something planned for the, oh hang on sorry sorry there's someone at, there's someone at the door hey board game barbecue team bobby hill here from garfield games congratulations on reaching the 300 Epic milestone and long may it continue. Massively looking forward to catching up with you at PlayCon for a few bevies. Matewa. Hello, BBQ team. It's Carl Van Ostrand here, your listener and friend from many miles away. So 300 is a pretty big number, like really big. I think it's actually bigger than 100 and 200. Uh, so a real heartfelt congratulations, guys. And Thank you for the laughs, uh, the company and the car and the great topics and for being the addicts that you are. Uh, please don't stop. Yeah. Um, actually, you can't stop uh, at this point. You have to keep going. Sorry. Cheers. <laughs> Bill Walker-Harding here and congratulations on 300 episodes. And thanks for everything you've done to make the hobby great here in Australia. Hello, Board Game Barbecue crew. This is Shem Phillips from Garfield Games Over the Ditch in New Zealand. Massive congratulations on reaching 300 episodes. That's huge. Thank you for all the support over the years. We love you guys. Love the show. Keep up the good work. Hi, this is Richard Garfield. Congratulations on 300 episodes, and I'm looking forward to the next 300. G'day, mates. Not sure I can say that, but hey, you know, I'm going to give a shot anyway. Hey, this is Matt Riddle from uh, Motor City Gameworks. I just want to say I appreciate you all so much and thanks for not only the support on all of our projects but also just the excellent podcast that I love listening to and it's pretty amazing as we do this gaming thing that you can uh, you know feel like you've got friends that are literally halfway around the globe so I appreciate everything you all do congratulations again on the 300th episode amazing work have a great one <clears throat> sorry about that just some, some some guy at the front door. I didn't know who it was. It sounds like Carl Van Ossen went to the same school as Connor when it comes to maths. <laughs> <laughs> when he said What's that, I, I replied to him and went, yep, thanks. Your maths checks out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not unwarnable. Um, Def, Def's prepared a little something for us. Um, what do you got, Def? So I'm, I'm a stats geek. Uh, on top of being a map geek, I'm also a stats geek, very fascinating stuff. So I thought I'd prepare some statistics or some kind of like almost like a trivia for us to to go through. And uh, I thought we'd do it like almost like a pop quiz so that the listeners can try and play along as, as the listening. Uh, I want to thank Draven because I used his master sheet for some of the for some of the statistics. So thank you, Draven. So the first category is generic. 
stuff, generic stats for the podcasts. So the remember the the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. So you got to be fast, but you also have to be correct. How many total downloads has the podcast has so, had so far? Uh, Not hearing a ding. About three hundred and seventy thousand or something like that. Three ninety two. 392, not 1,000, just 392. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. 392,000, that's what No, I'm, you've got the Connors, Connors family. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It is 388,500. Oh, oh wow. so close. Oh. Well done. That's very good, very close. How many individual games have been sizzled in total in the first 294 episodes? Remember? This is up to a specific point of time, so we could get the stats. So, what is the number of games that have been sizzled in total? You got to think designers sizzle games as well. Yeah, so it's and not just three and app. Been a lot. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes Ooh. we don't sizzle when we're sometimes on. We I would say nine hundred and thirty-four, <laughs> seven hundred eighty, eight, eight seventy-one, <laughs> eight twenty-two. I don't think anybody's going to get closer to Joe, so I'm going to give it to Joe. It's 746 oh, different games. Oh, that's pretty games. good. Oh, well done, Joe. Nice. So that's a pretty decent effort. Joe. Now, this next one was going to be too easy, so I made it a bit more complex. <laughs> Which games have been sizzled the most? Age it. of Steam, surely. <laughs> no, <laughs> like it. Age of Steam project? is not in the list. Are we can, can counting like expansions I for think games? on Mars? No, no. I, I'm pretty sure because I was going to sizzle Warp's Edge the other week, and it's already been sizzled three times. No. Whoa. Is Barrage in there? Mitch said Barrage. Barrage yeah. is in there. Of course too it is. It's too brilliant. many bones. <laughs> it has to be too many bones. Too many bones to be in there. So, Barrage is in there with six sizzles. Wow. Too many bones. Too many bones is in there with seven. Wow. Gloomhaven. Uh, no. Oh. The most sizzled game. There's, Can't yeah. be rude. Can't is be rude. Something is in more? there with six. Wow. Yeah. Oh. But it's not the number one. It's not the number one. There's two more games that had seven oh. sizzles. Age of There's Steam? one game that had eight. No. Nope. Oh. One game that had eight. Kingdom Death Monster. Yes, no. <laughs> that's it. Kingdom wow. Death Monster with eight. Yeah, and we then have Dune Imperium and Ark Nova joining Too Many Bones at seven. Yeah, oh, wow. I'm shocked. So, this is obvious because you talked about that. You sizzled that six episodes in a row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. I was going to say it must have been sizzled twice by me, twice by Jules, <laughs> once by Connor. I'm not sure who else is on that list. Maybe a guest. A guest, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I'm going to have to look this up. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Wow, we just KDM. Check him, fact check him. <laughs> the next one is for hardcore fans. Let's see who finds this one. Which games have been sworn as oaths the most? And there's a tie on the first place, but these games are clearly ahead of everything else, which was a surprise. Oh, I'm going to say the lion. too many bones. Nope. No. No. Jaws of the Lion, was that nope. in there? No, okay, okay. <sighs> Arkham Horror? It's going like someone's favourite game. Is it Guy Project? No. I'll no, help you a something. little bit. Is it's it like games a- that we've had, uh, I'm going to call it representatives of the games, either designers or publishers, yeah. on the podcast. Nope. It's going to be something that's come out new that everyone was going to want to that's try. What I'm think- so that's why I said Jaws of the Lion. Of, yeah. Um, the barrage? No takers. Surely no three barrage. sisters. Three sisters. No. Not oath. No. It's not no. oath. No. That would have been. Go for it. That would have been interesting. That would have been so much misery. <laughs> one of them is unsettled. Oh, oh yes. Oh. And the other one is cloud spire. And both of these have been sworn nine times. You guys. Wow. wow. How many successful? Do we have that data? <laughs> I will get to that because that's the next <laughs> The next question is which games have been fulfilled as oaths the most? And there's a tie, three way tie on the first place. On Mars. Um, too many on bones. Mars is near on the list. Too many bones is not on the list. Adrian, you have to come up with a different answer. <laughs> <laughs> Unsettled? 
Unsettled is one. Okay. Clouds pie? Nope. Well, which means we stunk at that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. I think you failed it, right, Mitch, or not? I think I was. I think it was my oath five times. I yeah. five times. <laughs> think earlier in in the podcast because oh, blackout Hong Kong. Does it count if Adrian <laughs> failed it nineteen weeks in a row? That's I think blackout. it was thirty six. Actually, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was up there. So we have architects of the West Kingdom. Okay. Okay. And Teotihuacan. Oh, I'm going to say Teotihuacan. Uh, yeah. oh, of course. Very good. Well done. You've done well. Now, the next category is a bit more personal because it relates to the team members. So, here we go. Which team member, given we were talking about oaths, has fulfilled the most oaths? Oh, I'm out. boy. I'm out. <laughs> Jules. I reckon it's Jules. I, I think Jules. Jules. Yeah, I think no, it's Jules. no way. Jules. No, I, Could think be deaf. Deaf. I think it's Either deaf. Jules or yourself, deaf. It's neither of those people. No. It can't be me because something's going wrong. The person, the person that has to fill the most oaths with 79 decent <gasps> effort is Mitch. No. Give him a clap. Second is Connor, by the way, in that list with 76. Wow. Conversely, Jeez. you know what's coming. <laughs> Which team members have fulfilled the least oaths? Are we in this? Me. Come on. You guys are a miss <laughs> because <laughs> you just joined. That would be uninteresting. Yeah. So you are has in to be it. Me. It's got to be. No, if it's the no, least, it's got to be Joe. Do you, mean, do you mean completed the least or failed the most? Failed to fulfill. Failed to fulfill oh, the most. Yes, most I, it's got to be yeah. I could, okay. No, it's me for sure. Sorry. That's not it. It's what Dan said first. Have fulfilled the least amount of oaths. Oh, fulfilled the okay. least amount. Uh-huh. So I, think that's, yeah. me I think that's sure. me. Joe. Uh-huh. No, it would be me for sure. I got Joe first and then Dan a second. <laughs> <laughs> I, I already said that. Obviously, Joe, not canon. Dan yeah. and Lauren are new, so right. that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be interesting. It so it's you and me, Dan, oh. at 59. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm middle in the pack. <laughs> Which you know, you know what, Def? I love you like a brother, but that's unacceptable because you <laughs> you play more games than any human being I've ever met in my life. <laughs> so, what's your excuse? Because he's playing the same game. Yeah, yeah. that's it. He just played five hundred times. Project, yeah, times. Yeah, like, if the question was who's played the most games between midnight and five a.m., oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Def wins. Def wins. <laughs> Which team member has done the most sizzles? Oh, me, Adrian. No, yeah, Adrian. wow, I was super surprised by that because Adrian's been in the most podcasts, that was easy. Yeah, but who has done the most sizzles? If it's not 80, Jules, it's Jules. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's a very interesting thing for you, and please pay attention because I spent like half an hour trying to come up with this stuff. (laughs) You know how we all did our top 10 games of all time? We do them towards the end of every year. Mm -hmm. We did them a few few months ago. If you want to look at that, go back to the podcast and listen. So each of us has a top 10. There's nine of us, so there's 90 entries across all of our top 10s. How many of these are not in the top 100 of the Board Game Geek rankings? Oh. oh. This is interesting. Top 100. And not, it's not in the top 100. It's right. not 90 unique games either. No, no it's okay. 90 entries. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'd say eight. Whoa, I'd no. say 30. Hey, Wait, oh, 30. No, way more. I'm going to say 31. like... Way I'm going to say 60. 42. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say 37. Who 40 said 42? Joe. I said, th- I said 31. Joe's got it. It's 42. Oh, Joe. Get out. I'm with you, Joe. You are very good at this. He's good. So You're that's good. very impressive very because good. I actually, that prompted me to go back and look at the top tens of the nine original hosts and the games that were sitting inside the top 100 of those top tens were a lot more than now. Mm. So we're playing more diverse games. We're playing, we were trying more games. Maybe some of these are a bit newer as well. So that was mm. interesting. And which team members, given we, we talked about that, have the most and least games in their top 10 being 
outside of the board game geek one 100 i'd be the least i think i think i don't think i've got many in the top 100 maybe yeah, i was gonna say know. mitch would have a few outside i've got a few inside i think it's too. dan you've got different i think it's lauren names. Yeah. oh could be lauren lauren was close i think i might have the most but it was close but it wasn't joe has seven out oh. of his top 10 outside of the oh. top 100 wow and the least amount was Connor with two of his games outside of the top 100. Yeah, yeah what about oh. oh, people? <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> next category, events. I know you all love the events. So, how many game days has the board game barbecue run so far? Only correct answers. You should all know this. 31. Oh, I think it's 30. Is it that many? Yeah. Oh, it's definitely up more than 30. Really? 32. Is too many an answer we can give? <laughs> <laughs> too many is the answer. 30 is correct. Oh, wow. Well, well done, yeah. Jules. PlayCon will be 31. event number 31 yep. coming up in July. But how many people have we hosted across all 30 of our events, all 30 of our game oh, days? I was guess. No, this is, this is like the, you know, the experiment with the, the gummy the, the gummy candies, the gummy bears in the jar. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Same thing, except I'm not going to average your answers. Somebody has to get this right. <laughs> what? Is it unique? Is it unique guests or is it no. total guests? No, Just it's total, total people, but I'm not counting ourselves, our team members, sure. and I'm not counting volunteers. Just yeah. ticket holders. Ticket holders is correct. Oh, yes. man. So yeah. at, basically adding up the attendance of all the game days. I reckon we average about 100 and. 40. 10. Oh, okay. So maybe three and a half thousand people. I say 4,337. <laughs> Lauren's gone to pen and paper, I can see. <laughs> She's yeah. like fully, fully working like, it out. Hey, hey. My mum texted me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to ask that Hang on. I don't know. It's. I, I think it's over 3,000 people. That's, that's my best guess. Yep. It's between the number you and Adrian said. It's 3,902 people. Wow. Taking into account that in every game day, there's minimum of uh, 10, 15 team members and volunteers. We've hosted more than 4,000 people in our game days so far, which is pretty staggering. That's crazy. Wow. Wow. Now... These game days would be nothing without a bit of competition between states. So, <laughs> which state has the largest attendance average per event? So, Brisbane. No. Yeah, it's got to be gotta Queensland. It. Got to be Brizzy. Come on. Brisbane has run the most events. You said average. That was easy. Everybody knew that. Yep. But which state has had the largest attendance average per event? Oh, it might be Melbourne. Yeah. And how many yeah. Give me numbers? Oh. Uh, average, because it's over 100. 130? Yeah. I'm going to say 120. 127. And because which we states? A, which which uh, state Vic, you're picking? Victoria. Melbourne. I'm oh, sorry, yeah, Victoria. I don't, no, hang on, hang on. I don't know if it is Victoria, only because if, for the first, like, five or ten, we only had, you guys We had two had events at small the, but But it was, it was capped at 100, but we hit the max. We capped it at 100, which is why we had to move. Right. And then it's usually around 120, 140. Right. But is the first is those first kept at a hundred enough to Could stay be. in front though, or is you know if Brisbane and Sydney well, had the first Brisbane one was quite small, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, the first shed. Brisbane was only like sixty or something. Do you want the answer? Yeah, yeah. Brisbane is third with one hundred and twenty-four oh. average. <laughs> wow. That's upset. Brisbane <laughs> is second <laughs> with one twenty-seven. Sydney comes first with one twenty-eight. So all of these oh, game wow. days. <laughs> in- <laughs> Love it, Lauren. Yeah. <laughs> the averages yeah. are so close. Yeah. And uh, it's impressive because I thought they'd be clearly we'd see some some discrepancies, some differences there, and yet there aren't any. 124, 127, 128 is crazy. Wow. wow. You're right. It is impressive that Sydney's number one, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> For what <once>. expected. <laughs> Now, moving on to the next category is about listeners. So 
which podcast episode that is not a top 10, because the top 10s uh, that we do get the most listenership, which episode that is not a top 10 has the most downloads? I, I could be wrong, but I think it's the interview with Cole Worley. No. It is not. Oh. Interview with, with Isaac Childress? It is not. Adrian knows because he looks at the stats every night. Uh, Tom yeah. Vassell? Yeah. Oh, no. it's going to be Tom Vassell. I don't even no. think it's a guest episode. It's it not is again. not a guest episode. What it's the it? one with Ticket to Ride Legends where Dan's just a Ticket to Ride Legends. Is that it? Really? No, it's, oh. was, it, it's was, it epis- te- was it Terraforming Mars Ares Edition? Hey, tell, give us, guess, but can no. you give us the number, Def? Because we won't know it off the number, but it'll give us a rough gauge of where in the four years it happened. The number of the episode. It's got to be yeah. later. 241. Oh, wow. 241. Oh, recent. 241. When the first episode that Nana and stuff. I were on got a, a <laughs> decent amount. That was, But that was 270. Wasn't that 270? Oh, you said it wasn't. There's, we didn't have a guest on. So how are we going to nothing. Know? There's nothing special about this episode. The, oh. It was episode <laughs> 241. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it was the games that were sizzled were Solani, Camel Up the Card Game and Scythe. That was me. I was there with Mitch and Dan. Camel Up Card Game was me. Is that what it was? Solani might have been wrong. Sure. What did I we What did we sure. discuss in that episode that made it stand out? As outside of the fact that it was, you know, three handsome Adonis's on the show. <laughs> I think we were, giving, we were giving hot tips for the Melbourne Cup. That's what we were doing. <laughs> okay. That was, that was difficult, but this next one is even more difficult. Was that was that the was that the right people there? Was it the three of us? Or did you know? I'm the only one that's that done Camel Up card game. It sounds right. Yeah, right. That's a spin out. How weird. Okay. What is the non-English speaking country that we have the second most listeners from? Because everybody knows the first one is Germany. Mm. Thomas Thomas listens to the podcast 24-7. <laughs> yeah. So what is the second country? Non speak non-English speaking. Non Portugal. I was gonna say we had some we had someone from Portugal or that he was Portuguese. I don't know whether he was from Portugal. Italy? Uh, France is my tip. Brazil. Italy, no. France, no. I was no. going to say, is it somewhere in no. South America? Portugal, is it? No. Is it European country? Greece. It is a European country. Greece Could is Could be Greece. Oh. Right. Holland? Greece is in the top hey, ten. Connor, do you have any oh, relatives Belgium? that live overseas? Belgium? Yeah, but they're all in English-speaking countries. <laughs> <laughs> is it Belgium? Uh, very close. It's the Netherlands. Oh, it's Netherlands. the Netherlands. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's also the Netherlands. <laughs> he got it the Hollands. Well, hello to all our <laughs> Netherlands <laughs> listeners. <laughs> You're the Dutch. So... We have listeners from all across the world, uh, more than 160 countries, and we, we're very grateful for that. There are some countries that offer one listener every month, and it has to be some kind of mad follower that, that listens to our podcast. So um, in the last three months, which countries have we had a single listener from? There's six countries in this list. Uzbekistan, I, Luxembourg, no. Cuba. No. no. No, I think is one of them Israel? No. Mexico. Japan? Norway. You have zero so. Far. <laughs> wow, <laughs> great. Well, my Chile. Thailand, Chile, <laughs> New Zealand, no. South Africa, <laughs> New Cambodia, New Zealand. Zealand. New Antarctica, <laughs> Kenya. Oh god. Fiji, South Africa. I'm calling it. Hey, well, are hopeless. Well, there's no left. We've, we've covered every country on the, on the planet. <laughs> so, Albania. Wow. Of course. Colombia. Gabon. Gabon. Latvia. Mauritius. And the Maldives. Wow. There wow. You go. wow. wow. Look at that I'd on like the to holidays. think. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, we're on holidays. Around, going yeah. going, oh, I'm lying by the pool. I might listen I'd to like the game. We're, we're the number one podcast. Board game podcast in Gabon. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next and final segment is about guests that we've had on the podcast. How many different guests have oh, we geez. had in total on the podcast? If we, had, if we had a group, is that counting? Is that three guests or are we just counting them as one, like MCG? What? Well, if we had like multiple people on it, oh, once, as City. A guest, like different Orange people. Nebula. Yes, if there's two people Ooh, yeah. on on the same episode, that's two people. I think it's somewhere oh. between fifty and sixty. So I'll say 50. I said fifty. I said fifty-three. I'm gonna say oh, 55. 50. 49. 80. 
It's 81. Oh, wow. 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 Lauren. Lauren, well done. Oof. Yeah, 81 different guests. That is a staggering number. Mm. Well done. How lucky are we? Mm. Well, who yeah. were, I think most can remember who the first guest was, but who can tell me the first three guests we had on the podcast? First three? Mm-hmm. Jamie said no. Andrew Bosley was first. Bosley. Well, I'm looking at the order. I'm just doing the oh. first three. Jamie Stegmaier was Howard. second and Cardio was third. Yeah, they're the three I'd put in. So the first two are correct. It's Andrew Bosley and Jamie Stegmaier. Oh, it wasn't Cardio. <clears throat> the third one was Oliver Millen. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. Ah, yeah. there we go. There you go. Dan, Dan was over at my place and was nuking my... Yes, uh, we played his city in in the his prototype, and then then we had him on the podcast. That's right. Who was the fiftieth guest we had on the podcast? Oh. I, I, at this point, I was running out of ideas, so we, <laughs> you, you can tell. <laughs> nice can, you give us, can you tell us the episode number? It's not the Miko. Nah, that was early. Oh um, man, it's not. He he was the answer to which guest have we had on the show? Who it was episode one hundred and seventy nine. One seventy nine. Oh, I know that one. That was um. No, I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Cole Worley? Nope. Bobby Hill. Bobby Hill. Oh, yeah. Good oh. guess. <laughs> well done. Nice. Which yeah. guest has done the most sizzles? Ooh, maybe Ian. Ian at all? Ian is in the top three. Paul Someone Grogan. that's been on Paul Grogan. Yeah, it is Paul Grogan. Yeah, yeah. but it's a. Three-way tie. Paul Grogan's done four. Ian O'Toole's done four. And Devin Norris, in a single episode, did four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. But Ian O'Toole did it in two episodes. Paul Grogan did it in three. Can we can we ask Dana which guest she thinks been on the pod that has the most sex appeal? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a guest, Lauren. I'm here all the time. All right. I'm here all the time. <laughs> that one. It's the Audi that's doing it for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. And the last um, one, which podcast episode with a guest has the most downloads? Isaac Childress. I think that's Cole Worley. Cole Worley, surely. No. I feel like no. Sam McDonald. Tom Vassell? Tom Vassell. Um, yeah, it's got to be him. Adrian's got it. It's episode 234 with Sam McDonald. It's it's one of our top 10 most downloaded episodes. There you go. Oh. There you go. Kiwi's doing it. He's got a bigger <laughs> family than Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> to close this off, two funny stats. Four is the amount of numbers I have personally witnessed Connor pouring water all over board games. <laughs> <laughs> and 67 is the amount of time Mitch said he can't make a team meeting because he's washing his hair that <laughs> So there you have it, just a bunch of stats I put together for for this. So thanks for... Thanks, thanks Steph. For that was great. great. Yes. Cool. Thanks, Steph. That was awesome. Woo-hoo-hoo. That was really great. Adrian, do you want to um, just do our, our community shout out so that? Oh, hang on, sorry. There's. Oh, I'll just get that. How many different doorbells do you hey, have? Team, it's Dave Beck here from Paverson Games. I just wanted to reach out to all of you and congratulate you on 300 episodes. That is huge. So excited for you, longtime fan. Can't wait to see what you all do next. Congrats. Hey, everybody, it's David Thompson. I just wanted to say congratulations on reaching 300 episodes. That's an amazing accomplishment. You know, it's been a couple of years since I was on. I got to meet everybody, chat with you all, and it's been awesome to watch you continue to grow since that time and do amazing things with the podcast. So once again, I just wanted to say congratulations on episode 300, and here's to 300 more. Hey, Board Game Barbecue crew. It's Eno Tool here. Congratulations on reaching 300 episodes. Uh, What an incredible achievement. Keep up the great work, and I'll see you all at PlayCon. Cheers. Hey to the Board Game Barbecue team. It's Sam McDonald here. I could potentially be in a state of oath-breaking at this very (laughs) moment, but no one can fully confirm that quite yet. But all of that aside, I just want to congratulate you on the mammoth achievement of 300 podcast episodes I'm so surprised people still listen to you. That's amazing. You're probably more surprised than I am that that's the case. But seriously, guys, you are all legends. Um, You're doing an amazing job. And I'm really looking forward to catching up with you at PlayCon in July. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep remembering why you do it for the love of games, for sharing your love for the hobby. 
and um, look after yourselves. All the best, guys. Hey, team, it's Matthew Dunstan here. Congrats on the 300 episodes and reaching such an amazing milestone for the podcast. And thanks so much for what you do for the industry, both here in Australia and abroad. Uh, it's a great reflection on uh, the amazing work that you do. Thanks so much. Cool. Good job, Dino. Well done. Well done. Well done. Oh. I, I emailed most of the guests that we've had on the show in the last 300 episodes. And um, Jamie Stegmeyer responded within an hour of receiving the email. Wow. Amazing. Was, yeah, absolute yeah. superstar. And then they started coming in not long after that as well. So everyone's been, and everyone's been very sort of giving of their time with interviews and whatnot. So we really appreciate them sort of helping us get to where we are. I don't think we should let Sam McDonald listen to this episode because he was big note in us then. Imagine what he's going to do if he listens to the episode. He's going to be big note in us even more. So <laughs> maybe the top dog, you reckon? So <laughs> cool. Well, yeah, massive thanks to the entire community. This is a bit of a journey for all of us, I think, as well, this 300 episodes and also for our community. Our community has grown and gone from strength to strength. And I think that the board gaming community as a whole is gone from strength to strength especially what we've seen in australia anyway so yeah just a massive thank you to anyone that's ever listened to the podcast anyone that's done a share they've told a friend they've told a family member like it's just a massive thank you basically to everyone that's ever helped us in any shape or form like it really does mean a lot to us all and that's why we're still here and still able to do this now if you know what else helps the community adrian go debt mitch advent games .com.au. They do a great job of servicing the community with games that are available to buy. They've got a long list of different categorizations down the side, so you can really narrow down the games that you want to pick up and get a bargain whenever you need one. You've bought anything from Advent Games lately? I have, actually. I bought a few things just recently, ready for PlayCon. So they also will be at PlayCon, which will be amazing to see Dean and his team because they actually contribute to a lot of the community in Sydney and in the board gaming area in all over New South Wales. So Funny you should mention that because Dean from adventgames.com.au has been a supporter of the Board Game Barbecue podcast since episode very early. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was definitely early. It was definitely it, early. It I don't know if it was one, mind, but it was very actually. early. It was I was very like, early. someone wants to sponsor us? Are they insane? <laughs> like, what the hell? And he's but also hey. been a great supporter of the uh, Sydney Game Days, and he turns up to all of those. So anyone who's ever shopped with Advent Games and has heard about the great service, if you're coming along to PlayCon, you could see meet Dean in person and uh, mm. really get to experience that uh, that service firsthand. And between Jay Benedictson and Dean with their radio voices, we'd be out of a job if we put them on here. So we'll we'll keep them away <laughs> for a little while longer. But yeah, just a huge thanks to everyone in the community. Like, uh, uh, any sort of community moments that stand out for you guys that you want to just talk about joe you've been sort of part of the community as well and you all have all the new people lauren and dana since before you joined the pod so is there anything that you'd like to say that you've noticed since you've been joining the team look it's a really wonderful hugely supportive community i feel like i was really involved in the community but kind of being thrust into the podcast kind of made me take more agency over my kind of community engagement and i just found that I'd already met a lot of people and people were already so kind of warm and receptive, but just really lovely and embracing new members and new voices in the podcast, which was really great. And also just being on the pod gave me the opportunity to continue to meet more people and kind of push the bounds and the circles of the people that I engage with in the community. So yeah, just amazing, amazing group of gamers. The one thing that I said that I love the most and will cherish the memories the most about is the community. So without the community, you know, it's this kind of symbiotic relationship where the podcast wouldn't be where it is without the community. And I think, you know, Dana, Laura and I are the newest members. And I, I think we would all say that I don't think the community would be where it is without the podcast and you guys leading the podcast and leading the game days. So I will I will, I will forget board games, but I'll, I'll never forget the relationships I've made um, as a result of the community. Everyone's so lovely and so nice. And um, yeah, I'll just love you all so much. No, cool. I'm going to shed a tear after that. How can I, how can no, I go what, after what that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, Dana. <laughs> More bodily fluids from Dana. This is just what we expected. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't you do your best thinking on the toilet? I do. Anyway, uh, look, it's changed. It's changed my life being on the podcast and getting to to know you all. I was, you know, when I first started, I was a, a stay at home mum 
with uh, almost adult children and with no prospects of anything. And now suddenly I've got a, a new venture and it's all because of the community. It's given me focus and it's helped me mentally and I'm just so grateful to for the opportunity. Yeah, I, I can't say enough about it. It's been wonderful. Something else as well, if you would like, please, we really need some help with the Spotify ratings and the Apple podcast ratings. Now is the time to leave a review to make Dan read it out, make it really complicated with lots of long words because that's always more fun. Or rise to the challenge. Or in a foreign language. Or in a foreign language. Or the rap. Someone do the rap. He has to rap again. He, he He's so good. If you listen to some of our old top tens, Dan did the entire like Hamilton soundtrack. I'm, his top tens I'm, bringing the raps, I'm bringing the raps back, my top 10 later this year. Oh, Never yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's so good. But, yeah, huge thanks to the community. Please just jump on a Facebook, search us out on Instagram, YouTube, Discord community, like we've all said many times before. It is really like a family. Everyone's in there talking about all sorts of different subjects, be it board games, sports for some weird reason some people like to talk about that books you know lots of cool stuff to talk about in there so yeah jump in get involved it's a great place to just hang out and yeah have a chat about board games and life so and a thank you to all the patreons current and past mm. you know and future and future ones yeah. that's it <laughs> i won't say no to future <laughs> but that's a that's a special kind of support, you know, to give up your personal funds to support what we're doing. We're greatly appreciative of that. Hundred percent. And on that note, that's uh, that's episode three hundred. It's been fun having a trip down memory lane. Thanks to everyone who's reached out and sent us the congratulations messages. We really really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who, for their support, and thanks to the listeners for indulging us. And you know, on this episode, to just go down memory lane. We'll be back next week with. All the regular stuff will be back with Sizzle. We'll be back with our O's. We'll catch up on last week's question of the pod as well. But that was fun, guys. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks, Dan. Good job, Dan. Thanks, 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 Dan. Until next time, play more games. Bye. Cheers. Bye. 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 Hello, testing. One, two. Hello. Good morning. How is mine? Is mine good? Hello. Good morning. Everything okay? One, two, one, two. Testing, testing. Hello, hello. Testing. Testing, testing. Can you hear me all right? Does that sound good? I can hear you fine. Mitch, you can have, have a levels looking. Levels, levels, good. levels, levels good. Yeah. Levels good. Yeah, we should test levels. Levels, levels. Sweet. <laughs> no clipping, so it's good. I'm actually. Ooh, am I even on? Yes, I'm still on. Sorry about that. Okay, you're, you're making waves. Perfect, making waves, baby. I'm back. Yeah, just cut out for some reason. Yeah, Mitch's waves don't look like much at all because he hasn't said anything yet. That's a shock. Oh, darling, I <laughs> can't get enough of your love, baby. How them lines, Dan? We just lost Mike. Mm, it seems he... like he might be having some internet issues. Yeah, well, there, going... there was a storm out our way. Yeah, right. You're on mute. <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> so it is to teach me how to use the mic. <laughs> I've got the board says you're offline. Yeah, it said it went offline and then reconnected. Yeah. Almost instantaneously. Yeah. Can you hear us, Connor? No, he can't hear anything. Well, he just he said no. Though. He, he he responded to me. Yeah, can you hear us? And he goes, no. <laughs> no, nah, can't hear You're muted, Dan. <laughs> oh, you're muted, Dan. <laughs> you're muted again, Dan. <laughs> I was on that episode. Yeah. You're going to have to do some editing. <laughs> oh, am I ever? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. It's going to be a long one tomorrow. I don't know why it did that. I have <laughs> literally no idea. I'm like, right, here we go. And then the whole thing died. <laughs> it's like are we all ready yes crash <laughs> all right okay we're good now <laughs> are we looking yep. okay oh i look very low hello hello jules hello. is high hello the jules is always high on a sunday night <laughs> 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 am i am i am i lagging now 
Yeah, I am. Because you're t- nah, you're taking too long to reply. Trust me, I'm lagging. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead. What? what what's, what's going on with your internet today? Oh. And he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, two. Oh, sorry. What was my... <laughs> I... Wee! So... That's going in there, Dan. <laughs> he's got you. <laughs> Okay, one, two. two. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were confused. <laughs> no, I'm out of it. Hey, said, let's play a game of the mind. We'll do really well. <laughs> Blake, who can count to three? <laughs> okay, Def, you're three. Uh, so my throat sound as raspy as it does to you, or is it in my ear? No, no, it it's, sounds it's the in same. Your in oh. your head. So, so I always sound like this, oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I apologize to him. Kermit the Frog and Michael Jackson's love child. <laughs> um, we can just do a one, two, three, four. If it goes um, me, Sarah, Mike, Dan. One. Two. Three. Three. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Who's three? <laughs> Make a decision. I was paying attention when, it, when, <laughs> when we allocated numbers. <laughs> Mike was three. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ready? I wasn't there when God handed out brains or ears. <laughs> Or numbers. <laughs> <laughs> One. Two. Three. Four. Am I too quiet? My levels look a bit low. Should I? No, 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 no. Don't 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 touch it. You sound great. Uh, I, reckon, yeah, but... I agree. In fact, I've never heard you sound so good, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> must be the must be the sore throat. Who's actually hosting? I don't know. You are supposed to be oh, you. It's me. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I almost lost my virginity in that hotel, but I didn't. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) I didn't see that coming.